So welcome to the Cybersecurity Maturity Model Certification Assessments and What You Need to Know from the NSF International Strategic Registrations Team. Today, our speakers will include Tony Giles, who is one of our lead auditors for ISO 27001 and has recently become a CMMC Provisional Assessor, as well as Rhea Dansell, who is also an ISO 27001 lead auditor and has recently become a CMMC Registered Practitioner. We also have Don McFarlane on the line with us as well, who is our NSF ISR Technical Manager for Aerospace. So without further ado, I will pass it over to Rhea. Thanks, Melissa, for the intros. Um, and so with that, we thank you all for joining us today. We'll spend some time talking about timing and duration for CMMC assessments, who will be doing the assessments, what to keep in mind about CMMC assessments, um, the role of CMMC within aerospace, and we'll finish it up with some closing comments. CMMC assessment duration, um, that's currently not defined. That's because there are many factors that need to be taken into consideration. The, uh, the DIB, the Defense Industrial Base, consists of a range of organizations from micro-organizations, two-person shops, to medium-sized large enterprises with upwards of 250 employees. So organization size, complexity, number of locations, that all needs to be taken into account during assessment planning. Um, it also helps to minimize business disruption during the assessment and to keep costs down. The duration for determining adequate maturity. Um, well, something to keep in mind be beforehand is that process maturity is not required to achieve CMMC level one, but beyond level one, process maturity is a requirement. And this was actually a question that was asked during the CMMC AB Town Hall last month <clears throat> on January 26. Um, the gist of the response was that as long as you can show repeatability, consistency, and that your documented processes is being are being followed, um, then that will support the maturity aspect of the process during the CMMC assessment. Uh, for level three assessments, processes should be managed, and so that involves an established plan, um, and that may include strategic objectives, management activities, um, defined people resources, funding resources, or specific tools for implementing policies. And this all feeds into the assessment objective that must be met to satisfy that process maturity level. Something else to keep in mind with maturity level is the approach that management takes to promote a strong culture of security. Um, once that's established and there is management level support, it sets the organization up to be able to achieve the level of CMMC compliance they're pursuing. So who is assessing? Around um, the spring time frame, assessments may be available, and those early assessments can only be conducted by provisional assessors. And there are less than 100 provisional assessors available nationwide. And as Melissa mentioned earlier, Tony is one of those provisional assessors. Um, registered practitioners are also certified to support as a team assessor during assessments led by provisional assessors. And um, there have been some mock CMMC assessments conducted already. This was using DIPCAC assessors through the Defense Contract Management Agency, the DCMA. Um, and this was conducted just to validate CMMC assessment guides, but no official assessments have been conducted yet. During the town hall, it was mentioned that 10 candidate programs have been identified to pilot the CMMC requirements for 2021 three fall under the Army, three under the Navy, three under the Air Force, and one support agency. And then there's that flow down to all of their subs. So the need for assessments based on these contracts, we'll start to see that emerge. All right, so what to know about CMMC assessments. Ideally, you'll want to formulate a plan um, define the scope that's important because it sets the boundary for the CMMC cert. CUI, controlled unclassified information, it cannot be scoped out, but you do want to understand the flow of your CUI, how it's uh, received, transmitted, processed, um, shared, or stored. 
So during an assessment, implementation of practices and processes will need to be verified using at least two forms of objective evidence. This includes policies, training materials, um, demonstration of practices, discussion with the person responsible for that activity, mechanisms such as technical controls, testing, or test results. For CMMC Level 1, implementation can simply be demonstration of the practice since there are no process maturity requirements, so documented policies are optional. But two forms of objective evidence will still need to be provided to verify compliance with each practice. Beyond level one, uh, documented policies are required and can be used as one of the two forms of objective evidence to show implementation. And the aggregate of the CMMC practices and processes for the CMMC level you are pursuing must all be met in order to achieve that CMMC certification. Thank you, Rhea and Melissa, for the introduction and kicking off. Um, what to know about CMMC Level 1 assessments? Level 1 is going to be very common objective evidence. A lot of it is going to be shoulder surfing or observation. That's going to be the process. There are going to be some very tricky domains within CMMC Level 1, and one of those is system and information integrity. This can be a fairly complex security requirement as it can relate to potential vulnerability scannings and correction of maybe CVEs. Those are the identified vulnerabilities throughout the vulnerability scanning process. Remember, we're going to look for three forms of objective evidence. This might be a test, this might be a documentation, or this might be observation. As I said earlier, level one assessments are going to be a significant amount is going to be observation. So we're going to look and understand how you are performing maybe the system and information integrity domain. Say, okay, we're doing a vulnerability assessment. Here's the vulnerability assessment. Here's the CVEs. Here's our correction to those vulnerability assessments. Now, observation, shoulder surfing, it's not a, it's definitely not a new audit tactic. And, and a lot of our aerospace customers, and we have Don on the phone, um, a lot of our aerospace customers, they are already going to be used to this observation technique. Don, did you want to add anything into this? Yeah, that's correct. That's one of the more common methods we use for auditing today. Just watching people, observing them doing their function, looking at the tools and resources that they need to perform those tasks, and then verifying the outcomes of those processes. So the, the shoulder surfing type of an activity should be nothing new to anybody that's in the certification space. Thanks, Don. CUI, really when we jump between the difference between level one and two and three and four and five, do you have CUI? So you really, when you look at CMMC level one, this is going to be focused on federal contract information or FCI. Now, as you get into level three, it's very strict that you identify where CUI resides within your system. Is CUI within a cloud environment? Is it or a cloud enclave? Is CUI in on-prem servers or on, on local machines? And as you move into level three, it looks beyond so much observation and basic cyber hygiene, but more of a managed cybersecurity experience. So you're looking for managed systems and more definition around a lot of those CMMC capability domains. They're going to look for documentation around each of the CMMC capability domains. So when you say beyond level one, you need to have processes and plans associated, that is mission statements, strategic goals and, and objectives, relevant standards. You have to show that you have resources defined for that specific capability or that specific managed practice. And again, you have to understand and show that that is a managed cybersecurity practice. And this is when we talk about some of the documentations for CMMC level three assessments. And we're going to take this as an example. This is the CMMC assessment guide. This is pulled directly from the CMMC assessment guide. This is a free resource. I encourage any anybody that's interested in being a CMMC assessor or any security professional that's going to have to go through CMMC to download and look at the assessment guide. This has specific examples in it. And this is an example of a level three practice associated with access control and separating the duties of individuals to reduce the risk. 
of activity without without collusion. So can you, as an example, determine if individuals requiring separation are defined? And something that might be looked at is that documentation. We might be looking at a access control policy. We might be interviewing personnel. We have multiple NSF personnel on this webinar today. And what Don has access to within the aerospace environment and what Rhea and I have access to within the CMMC or information security environment and what Melissa has access to within a marketing environment, they're all gonna be completely different. So we can show and discuss interview with the different personnel for responsibilities that show that they align with their division and within their role of the organization. And then we can do some of that testing and separation for each of those environments. This is, again, this is gonna be a very common audit technique or, or audit tactic. The other piece that we see to this is the system security plan that we've worked on and, and completed through NIST 800-171. It's also called out within the CMMC level three access control. So you or your organization might already have a system security plan in place. You're able to use that and show that as documentation. Don, anything you want to add in regards to documentation? I know aerospace gets heavily involved in documentation and, and separation of duties. Yeah, absolutely. Utilizing the resources that are mandated, if you will, under the CMMC program are going to be pretty important. But keep in mind, this is going to be integrated within your management system overall. So whatever has been created within the CMMC space needs to dovetail into the AS9100, 9110, 9120 space or whatever management systems an organization is using. We can't have multiple management systems trying to pull the business in multiple directions, managing different types of documents in different ways. We really need to focus on what works for the overall business and ensure that the security practices have been incorporated effectively into the business management system and not just the aerospace quality system and the CMMC system, but treat it as a business management system. Very well stated. Thanks for the introduction there, Tony. The point of this slide in my mind is to tell everyone or to remind everyone that even if you don't have an AS9100 certificate or you're not building directly to the government, this CMMC is going to apply to a lot of companies within the supply chain. And if your product other than COTS, correct me if I'm wrong there, Tony or Rhea, other than a COTS type item, everybody along the, the food chain is going to need some level of CMMC certification at some point. The number of DOD contractors are estimated to be approximately 300,000 different organizations. And currently we have about 23,000 AS9100 certificates issued globally. So it's pretty apparent that this is going to be much farther reaching than just the AS community. And, and organizations are going to have to get through this process fairly quickly. So it's not something we want to delay on. We, we want to make sure that we're being proactive, we're understanding the requirements and, and becoming prepared so that when it's time for that, that switch to become flipped, your organization is ready and you can, you can jump on it early so that you're not waiting in line for, for weeks or months and potentially impacting your ability to sell the product that you're currently selling. I think that's about all I have to say on that particular subject. Uh, closing comments. Thank you for the, the segue down into the, the closing comments piece, especially as you talk about the scope that CMMC is gonna reach. It is a brand new process and a significant size or significant requirement for a lot of a lot of dib based customers 300,000 plus dib based customers so this is going to be new this is a new process for them and this is a new audit um, for a lot of us and and seeing that no one's a CMMC expert use those free tools that we talked about the CMMC assessment guide the CMMC AB web page for guidance NSF is continuously working to become a C3 PAO and we have two CMMC resources we're adding more we have myself that's a provisional assessor and Rhea Dancel, which is a who is a registered practitioner. So we have CMMC resources on staff. We're continuously focused on, on adding more resources 
and we really anticipate full rollout by by spring of 2021. And this is really in line with what the CMMC AB has provided with, within town halls. There's an upcoming opportunity for more provisional assessments soon. This meaning they're conducted by a provisional assessor. So this could be coming very soon in terms of the NSF being audited. And then we wanna make sure that if you are interested in CMMC, we want to get your company, your information, we wanna get you signed up on our list to make sure that we can deliver that audit for you. So please, please reach out, contact us, sign up with the C3PAO early, and we're able to put you on that list to make sure that we can get that audit that takes place in 2021. That being said, thank you, Don and Melissa and Rhea, and I appreciate everyone's time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so thank you everyone for your time today. If you would like more information or if you have questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us either via email, which is on the screen right now, or you can actually sign up for our CMMC mailing list just by scanning this lovely QR code into your phone and signing up and you will receive emails from us on CMMC. So thank you so much and we hope to hear from you soon.